um, before this week is out, we will have finish acts. So that's um, kind of exciting that we will be moving on. Uh, but we do have a little bit left and it's acts that we're going to be reading today. What we're going to be reflecting upon and we're going to be praying about too. I hope it's helpful for you. So guys, this is Acts chapter 26, and I'm going to read it from the Good News Translation. Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak on your own behalf. Paul stretched out his hand and defended himself as follows. King Agrippa, I find myself fortunate that today I am to defend myself before you from all the things these Jews accuse me of, particularly since you know so well the, just, the Jewish customs and disputes. I ask you then to listen to me with patience. All the Jews know how I have lived ever since I was young. They know how I spent my whole life at first in my own country and then in Jerusalem. They have always known, if they are willing to testify, that from the very first I have lived as a member of the strictest party of our religion, the Pharisees. And now I stand here to be tried because of the hope I have in the promise that God made to our ancestors. The very thing that the 12 tribes of our people hope to receive as they worship God day and night. And it is because of this hope your majesty, that I am being accused by these Jews. Why do you who are here find it impossible to believe that God raises the dead? I myself thought that I should do everything I could against the cause of Jesus of Nazareth. That is what I did in Jerusalem. I received authority from the chief priests to put as many of God's people in prison as I could. And when they were sentenced to death, I voted against them. Many times I have had them punished in the synagogues and tried to make them deny their faith. I was so furious with them that I even went to foreign cities to persecute them. It was for this purpose that I went to Damascus with the authority and the orders of the chief priests. It was on the road at midday, your majesty, that I saw a light burning much brighter than the sun, coming from the sky and shining around me and the men travelling with me. All of us fell to the ground and I heard a voice say to me in Hebrew, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You are hurting yourself by hitting back like an ox kicking against its owner's stick. Who are you, Lord? I asked and the Lord answered, I am Jesus who you persecute. But get up, stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as my servant. You are to tell others what you have seen of me today and I will show you in the future. I will rescue you from the people of Israel and from the Gentiles to whom I will send you. You are to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to the light and from the power of Satan to God, so that through their faith in me, they will have their sins forgiven and receive their place among God's chosen people. And so, King Agrippa, I did not disobey the vision that I had from heaven, first in Damascus and then in Jerusalem and in the whole country of Israel and among the Gentiles, I preach that they must repent of their sins and turn to God and do the things that would show that they had repented. It was this reason that the Jews seized me while I was in the temple and they tried to kill me. But to this very day, I have been helped by God. And so I stand here giving my witness to all, to small and great alike. What I say is the very same things that the prophets and Moses said was going to happen. That the Messiah must suffer and be the first one to rise from death. To announce the light of salvation to the Jews and to the Gentiles. As Paul defended him in this way, Festus, Festus shouted at him, You are mad, Paul! Your great learning is driving you mad. Paul answered, I am not mad, your excellency. I am speaking the sober truth. King Agrippa, 
I can speak to you with all boldness because you know about these things. I am sure that you have taken notice of every one of them. For this thing did not happen hid away in a corner. King Abragrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do. Agrippa said to Paul, In this short time, you think you will make me a Christian? Whether a short time or a long time, Paul answered, my prayer to God is that you and all the rest of you who are listening to me today might become what I am. Except, of course, for these chains. Then the king the governor and Benice and all the others got up and after leaving, they said to each other, this man has done nothing to be put in prison or die for. And Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been released if he had not appealed to the emperor. So once again, we have Paul giving his testimony. And every time it changes just slightly, so it changes according to the audience. And here he really is appealing to King Agrippa. King, the king is who he is aiming um, his speech at. And I love at the end, uh, King Agrippa sort of saying, sorry, Paul, are you trying to convert me as you stand before me in judge? And just to Paul's response of, yeah, I'm trying to convert you all, all the time kind of I don't know it puts me in mind because um I say convert and I probably use that in potentially the wrong way but he wants he wants people to see the kind of error of their ways that's what repentance is all right repentance from like we kind of see that you see it too much as saying sorry it's like a oh I'm sorry but repentance is 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 more than just oh I'm sorry for something I've done it's about a turnabout face it's about saying the way that I have been going was leading me down a path that's dangerous and just not good. And I'm going to turn back from that and go a different way. That's repentance. It's not just, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done it. It's, oh my goodness, the way I'm living is going to end in catastrophe. So he wants that for people because he's, Paul is saying that this is the hope. I see that this way lies uh, darkness, bad, bad things. And this way gives you an opportunity to look for life. And for me, that's the the whole point of the gospel. Do I want people to receive the gospel of Jesus? Well, yeah, because there are some things in life that I think are dangerous and potentially damaging for people. And I still believe, although the church has got its faults, um, the, the, the hope of the gospel is still powerful and can still transform situations and those situations that lay ahead for some people you want them to turn away from I've known quite a few times people say oh I wish that people would just keep their faith their opinions whatever to themselves and the best way that I can understand why like they can express why I wouldn't want to do that is that if you stood there with like some miracle cure, okay, you'd got, you, something was wrong and you'd taken something that was, worked really well. Actually, sod it. If you even had a, a flipping laundry detergent that you realised was the best laundry detergent you had ever used in your life and that it had changed your washing forever, you tell people about that stuff. And people do. You people tell each other about the best sausages they've ever eaten because you really should buy at a local butcher. You people share when something has like positively benefited their life. Well, that's faith. That's the gospel. It's not just positively benefited my life in a little way, like a laundry detergent or a really good sausage. I mean, I'm vegan, so that doesn't work. But the gospel has changed my life. And there isn't a point at where I'm not going to want those people that mean something in my life or any people that could benefit from the hope that I see in it. Why would I not want to share it? And so, like Paul, I hope that at all opportunities I'd go, yeah, 
do I want you to receive this hope? Definitely. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you uh, for the hope that we have received in the gospel of Christ. For the way that it has helped us understand life and potentially overcome challenges that we have faced. Lord, we repent of when misteachings or when the church's um, inflexibility has taken away some of that hope for people. And Lord God, when it has made us feel afraid of sharing the good things in the gospel that we have received. May that change, Lord God. May we include all in that call to hope. And may we be proud of proclaiming that we have found something, found something worth uh, talking about, worth explaining to others, so that there's at least the opportunity for questions, for interest, and maybe discovering something that could help them too. Prepare our way, Lord God, and prepare the hearts of those that whom we will meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.